Good morning. It's December 23rd, and today's uh, person is Rabbi Abraham Heschel. Now, uh, Rabbi Heschel uh, came from a long line of Hasidic rabbis. That means his father and grandfather and on down the line. And uh, he took a different path. He went and he studied philosophy at the university there in Warsaw, and um, and then went on to the University of Berlin, uh, where he received a doctorate in 1933, um, and then went on as a professor and, and did quite well. However, in 1939, um, they kicked out, uh, kicked him off the faculty because he was a, a foreign Jew. So he went back to Poland. Now, at that time, uh, he uh, left and went to uh, London, and fortunately so, because that's when Germany invaded Poland and they took all the Jews to the camps, as we know. Um, but his, the reason he separated from his original roots was the fact that he went beyond and didn't think that, that Hasidic mysticism of the, of the Jewish faith should just be with themselves, but they should be encountering the world, is the way he felt. And so as he went on, uh, be obviously as a rabbi, but as he went on, he wanted to connect the, the world as it operates and, and, the, and the actual uh, message of God, this uh, mysticism with the real world. And when he described the real world, he had used man's search for meaning. Now, those words kind of connotate uh, Viktor uh, Frankl's book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, and he had been in the concentration camps and had talked about all that experience. So Heschel, while he was never in the concentration camps, was deeply moved by it, uh, and that moved a lot of his thinking and a lot of his concern uh, for people. Um, in the 50s, uh, he's working now in uh, the United States. He's working at a Jewish seminary. He's often uh, in brought into uh, Catholic seminaries uh, to be teaching them as well because what he did was he connected us with the Old Testament. Uh, he wrote books, a lot of books. Uh, he is Man is Not Alone, I think might have been his first, uh, the In Search of God in 55, uh, The Prophets in 62. But all these books had a way of like relating the cry for, for action. And he thought that faith really required the Jewish person to take action and to be a person of action. So that while everything that happens, certain people cause these things to happen, but as a nation or as a people, we are responsible for all that happens. So uh, when the Vietnam War came up, he was highly against that. Uh, in the 60s, when Martin Luther King uh, was protesting, uh, he's in the picture with Martin Luther King walking down the road at Selma. And so he was right there. Gave him an award. He received an award that they were pictured in together later on. Uh, but he is highly influential in wanting justice to be done. And he didn't see the religious experience as like, one religion or another, not at all. He looked at the religious experience as a fundamental human thing that happens. It's just an impulse. And it's not necessarily tied to any one particular religion, but the fact that it's in all of us. And so in his teachings, he very much united um, the, the, te the Jewish teachings and got a real appreciation that a lot of the Christian teachers and, and the seminaries were very impressed to connect these good insights into the Old Testament and the call, uh, particularly the prophets. Who Now, he didn't call the prophets people that predict things, but rather people that understood the word of God, wrestled with it, but then finally had to tell it. And it's like a clarion call for us uh, in action uh, to be taking God's intention in making that happen in our world. He had a couple of really great quotes, and the one I'd like to share with you uh, is going right shortly before he dies, he re makes a recording. And in this recording, he's given instruction to the youth. These are his words. Remember that there is meaning beyond absurdity. Know that every deed counts, that every word has power. Above all, remember you must build your life as if it were a work of art. Good things to tell young people and good things for us to hear.
that we have to build our life like it's very important. This is not just another day. This is our day. And the Lord has called us to live in it and to rejoice with him. Thanks, and the day after tomorrow, have a very Merry Christmas.